Okay, this video is going to be focusing on the impact of Stalin's rule. Uh, because you do not have enough time in the video, I'll only be focusing on two kinds of impact, which is the political impact as well as the economic impact. Okay, so when we speak about impact, I always tell you time and again, you have to assess impact. There are four different ways we can assess impact that I've taught you. The very, very basic one is positive and negative, which I highly do not recommend. The next level one is good or bad, which I also do not recommend. But the better ones are benefit, did not benefit, successful or not successful, or rather unsuccessful. So these are certain criteria you can use to determine the impact of selling through. So these are the three overarching ideas that you need to know of. The economic, which is the modernization of Soviet industry and agriculture, and the political, which are these following factors. Okay, like I said, I'm only going to be going through these two things in this video. So let's first look at the economic. At the heart of Stalin's economic policies is the idea of modernization. To put it very simply, modernization is a shift from traditional methods to modern methods of doing things. So in the past, the Soviet Union was highly dependent on farming. Okay, It was very labor intensive and this con was considered a traditional method of farming. So what they wanted was to make themselves more modern to be a industrial heavy country instead of depending so much on labor intensive farming. So why is it that they wanted to shift to modernization? Stalin wanted to achieve the same economic and military levels as the other Western powers. And furthermore, Lenin's new economic policy which allowed farmers to possess their own land had created a new class of wealthy peasants who chose to eat their crops instead of selling them. This led to a food shortage. In knowing Stalin, Stalin firmly believed in communism where he believed that everyone should have equal wealth. So he was against this idea of the Kulaks having more money than the rest or being able to produce more crops than the rest which he considered as unfair and against the ideology that he subscribed to. So, I repeat again, he wanted to carry out modernization of the Soviet Union. That was his end goal. So, how did he carry out modernization? He did this through a series of five-year plans. Okay, the first of which is him trying to expand the industry. The second of which is him producing more manufactured goods, including machinery for collective farms. And last but not least, okay, uh, well, during World War II, he wanted to allow for luxuries such as bicycles and radios. But the, at the heart of it, you can see that he wanted to expand his industry. So these five-year plans can be broadly categorized into two main policies that he carried out. The first of which is collectivization and the second is rapid industrialization. Both of these policies help him in achieving his bigger goal of modernization. So just a quick question. Do you think it is more important for collective do you think Stalin would have showed more interest in collectivization or more interest in rapid industrialization? He would have shown more interest in rapid industrialization because that is the path towards he was heading. He wanted to modernize the country. Collectivization was a means for him to achieve rapid industrialization. And I'll explain this to you as we go on through the next slides. Okay, so he paid heavy emphasis on rapid industrialization. So what exactly is collectivization? Okay, previously, before Stalin implemented collectivization, there were many, many different farms, okay, many different farms, many different landowners. So I've shown one big picture here to represent the Kulaks, the K-U-L-A-K-S. These Kulaks are wealthy peasants who are able to own lands. So when they own land, they can produce their own crops and they can sell it to whoever they want. Under the Kulaks, there were other wealth, uh, there were other peasants who were farming the land. Okay? However, they did not own the land. So it's only the Kulaks who are the wealthy peasants, the richer peasants, who own the land. So what they were doing is this, they were all working individually. So they would farm their, they would farm the land individually and they did not come together. So what this means is, for example, if this person has three tractors, okay, this person is working on his own with three, three, three tractors and he will have a fairly efficient farming, um, he will have a fairly efficient time farming. On the other hand, this person does not have any tractors and neither, neither does this person have any tractors. So their farming process is a lot slower. 
So what Stalin was trying to do was to combine them into one huge group. The, as the idea is alleged collectivization, right? The root word is to collect. So he wanted to collect all these farms together and make them into one huge farm. So what this means is that this person who had the three tractors will now share it with all the others. And those without the tractors will stand to benefit. Of course, the wealthy peasant, the Kulak, will not be benefiting because now he has to share his resources. But overall, the efficiency of farming is supposed to improve because they are now sharing their resources amongst one another. At the same time, if you have more uh, machinery, you have more tractors, it also means that less manpower is needed. So if we go by the idea behind collectivization, this is supposed to increase the efficiency of farming. Okay? Okay. So, collectivization. The state owned the land. Remember I told you before this, the Kulaks could own their own land, right? However, under collectivization, Stalin made it a point to for the state to own the entire land. So, none of the peasants no, any longer owned land, okay? At the same time, the state was allowed to distribute the crops. It assigned working hours for, uh, working hours for farmers and punished them for low quantities. This is the very broad idea of what collectivization was. Okay, so now let me bring you through why is it that Stalin wanted to carry out collectivization. Remember, he wants to achieve modernization, right? What was so good about collectivization? It is the fact that under collectivization, less people were needed and more machinery was able to do the work for them. So, more people could now work in factories and this will help him in uh, his rapid industrialization plans. So, if you remember earlier, I mentioned here, right? There's two ideas, there's two overarching policies that he wanted to carry out and both of these were in order for him to achieve modernization of which rapid industrialization was more important so via pursuing collectivization more manpower could now be devoted to work in factories and this will hasten the pace at which Stalin could achieve his modernization plans so what are the benefits and disadvantages of collectivization when we speak of the benefits of collectivization, it mainly benefits the state. Why? The state managed to collect the grain it needed to feed the industrial towns and export them to buy industrial equipment. Okay, they could decide who the crops would go to and in that sense they were able to export them so that they can earn profit. At the same time, it also benefited the state because manpower for new factories were found as peasants left the countryside. This helped Stalin achieve his goal of industrialization. So collectivization mainly benefited the state. Now let's look at the disadvantages of collectivization. It mainly disadvantaged the people of the Soviet Union. This list here is not exhaustive. I've only picked out a few examples to show to you the disadvantage. Okay, first things first, the farmers. The state fixed the farmers' working hours and wages. Farmers who produced low quantities or were absent from work were punished. So this is a negative impact because from having their freedom, they no longer had it and they had to subscribe to whatever the state was telling them to do. The other group of people, or rather you can even combine them as the same group of people, is the peasants. Okay, bad harvest contributed to the Great Famine of 1932 to 1923, which led to the death of millions of peasants in parts of the Soviet Union. Grain harvest dropped dramatically between 1931 and 1934 and did not recover to their 1928 level. So more or less, the peasants really suffered because they did not have the food to eat. They were mostly starving due to collectivization. It is not so much that collectivization was not able to increase the efficiency of farming and produce more foods, but it's the fact that the state were exporting the food that was produced over to other countries instead of feeding their own people first. Okay? Okay, so now we move on to our second, our second main policy, which is rapid industrialization. Under rapid industrialization, Stalin wanted to produce equipment for mechanization of farming. So if you see, it's a bit of a circle. Okay, under collectivization, he's getting, he wants more tractors to be in place. He wants collective farms so there are less people. These people will then move to factories and they in turn can help to build tractors and machineries to help collectivization. So they are going in a bit of a circle. However, at the heart of it, it is not just the idea of helping collectivization, but more importantly, it's about making uh, the Soviet Union a more modernized country. So the emphasis they placed in terms of rapid industrialization really was on resources such as coal, iron, steel, and electricity. 
So what were the benefits and disadvantages of industrialization? The benefits was mainly for the state. Okay, industrialization managed to increase industrial output. The original target in 1928 for coal was only 35 million tons of coal. But by 1932, they had achieved 64 million tons of coal. So this was obviously considered successful to the state. However, bearing this in mind, let's look at the disadvantage. The disadvantage really was to the people of the Soviet Union and mostly the factory workers. The state set quotas for producing machinery and other factory goods. The working hours and wages of factory workers were also fixed. Okay, look at the amount by which, look at their original target and their achieved target. You can clearly tell that the factory workers had a very, very difficult time achieving these targets under very stressful conditions. So in that sense, we have the benefits and we have the disadvantage. So I've very broadly covered the benefits and disadvantages of both collectivization and industrialization, which were attempting to achieve modernization through the five-year plans. So now we move on to our second factor, the political impact of Stalin's rule. Okay, Stalin needed to consolidate his power as more Russians became unhappy with the Communist Party due to Stalin's economic policies. Okay, think back to the Great Famine, the drop in um, harvest of grains. Okay, so people were clearly unhappy with Stalin. So what Stalin did really was to carry out a series of purges. Okay, and then on the other hand, we also have him trying to portray himself as a powerful and capable leader. So let's first take a look at this. The Great Terror occurred in 1934 to 1938. Okay, he used the Kirov affair as an excuse to carry out the Great Terror. So what exactly is the Kirov affair about? Sergei Kirov was assassinated for supposedly planning a plot to kill Stalin. He was a candidate for Stalin's position as Secretary General. Stalin felt threatened by Kirov and therefore he used he 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 put the blame on Stalin. Uh, he put the blame on Kirov saying that Kirov was going to assassinate Stalin. So using that, he later would get rid of more of his political opponents such as Kamenev and Zinoviev by staging show trials where they were forced to admit to crimes they did not commit. So show trials is a bit like um, a court case, but what they do is they force the opponents to admit to crimes that they did not commit prior to the court trial itself. Okay, so after many days of torture and imprisonment, they get them to sign something saying that you know they did do a crime although they did not do it, and this will be showcased to the public to make it look as if Kamenev and Zinovi were guilty indeed. Okay, and then we also have high ranking commanders and thousands of Red Army officers who, were, who had been under the control of Trotsky who were in prison or shot. Okay, remember Stalin clearly did not, did not like Trotsky and a lot of the commanders in the Red Army were loyal to Trotsky so he needed to get rid of them as well. This was him consolidating his power. And last but not least, we have the secret police. Remember he gained control of the Cheka, right? The secret police arrested people who voiced opposition against Stalin and by 1937, 39 million people had been executed by the secret police. Okay, so under Stalin's rule, there was great control over the people. There was great control over the people. So this entire period is known as the Great Terror. Of course, this is a positive or this is a beneficial impact for Stalin because it allowed him to consolidate his power. However, it was a negative impact or it was Okay, sorry. However, it was a negative impact for the many political opponents of Stalin. So besides doing all these things, he also had to portray himself as a powerful person. And this is what he did. He used propaganda. So he portrayed himself as a rightful successor of Lenin. Think back to the many pictures and the idea of pretending to be close to Lenin that we studied about in the rise of Stalin. Okay, and then he also put up pictures of himself in offices factories and classrooms, and Soviet history was rewritten to boost Stalin's status and discredit his rivals. So all these things together made him appear as someone who was trustworthy, someone who was the rightful uh, leader of the Soviet Union. So in that sense, the political, when we speak about the political impact of Stalin's rule, really what it did was to benefit Stalin because it allowed him to consolidate his power. However, it was not beneficial to the political opponents because they had to suffer a lot of torture under Stalin's rule. So when you study this chapter, always bear in mind that you have to think about the impact in terms of sorry, okay, you have to think about the impact in terms of at least binaries and get this down.
Okay?